Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Letters being sent to Awami League Party nominated candidates. Formal announcement of alliance candidates tomorrow. Also, some leaders surrender to absconding convict Tariq Rahman and communal forces. Comments by the Kader. Chief Election Commissioner asks executive magistrates to play appropriate role toward holding fair and impartial elections. Bangladesh on right path of democracy and forthcoming election to be free, fair and peaceful, says visiting EU Parliamentary Board delegation. EU agrees Brexit deal as European leaders urge British citizens to support Theresa May on agreement. And away in Sydney, India draw T20 series with Australia. Assalamu alaikum, this is Rifa Jahan welcoming you all to our news at 10 on BTV, BTV World and BTV Chattogram Center. And I am Annie Camry. Those were the highlights, now the details. Laying imports on strengthening cooperative movement across the country, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina said cooperatives are a tested strategy to expedite economic development. Cooperatives have a great and potential strength in development efforts. However, the movement should be expanded. Under this project, 82,395 village development societies have been formed in 87,000 villages. She added, the Prime Minister highlighted the socio-economic development of the country over the last 10 years, saying the development was possible due to the continuation of the Awami League government. A total of 20 cooperative societies in different categories received the National Cooperative Award from the Prime Minister on the occasion held under the auspicious of Development Department of cooperatives under the Ministry of LGRT and cooperatives. The Prime Minister enjoyed a colourful cultural programme on the occasion. Earlier, the Prime Minister visited different stalls set up by cooperative societies on Bangabond International Conference Centre premises. Ambassador of Sudan to Bangladesh, Sirajuddin Hamid Yusuf paid a farewell call on President Mohamed Abdul Hamid at Bangabhavan today. After the meeting, President's Press Secretary Joyn al Abidin briefed the reporters. During the meeting, the President thanked the outgoing envoy for completion of his tenure in Bangladesh successfully. President Abdul Hamid said Bangladesh and Sudan always express common views on different important issues in the United Nations and other international forums. The President thanked the people and government of Sudan for providing support and assistance on the Rohingya issue. The President expressed hope that cooperation in different sectors, including trade and investment between the two countries, would be expanded in the days to come. During the meeting, the outgoing Sudanese envoy expressed gratitude to the President for extending cooperation during his tenure in Bangladesh. He stressed on exchanging high-level visits to increase trade and investment between the true two countries. Secretaries to the President were present. Awami League today started distribution of its final nomination letters among selected candidates to contest the upcoming 11th parliamentary election. The party's General Secretary, Obaidul Qadir, opened distribution of nomination papers among the candidates in the morning at the party's central office in Dhaka. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina will contest the polls from Gopalganj 3 and Rongpur 6, while Obaidul Qadir got nomination letter for Noakali 5 constituency. Later, Awami League Office Secretary Abdul Subhan Golab was continuing the distribution process of final nomination letters. Meanwhile, Awami League General Secretary, Road Transport and Bridges Minister Waibul Qadir has said a full list of 300 finally selected candidates 
will be announced tomorrow. He said this while speaking at a press conference at the Awami League President Political Office of Dhanmundi in Dhaka this morning. Obadil Kader expressed his views as saying, it is a matter of very deep regret for the nation that Ultrafront leaders have surrendered to absconded and convicted Tariq Rahman and the communal forces. The Awami League General Secretary mentioned that the BNP is trying to make the country's administration controversial and law and order situation unstable. Obadul Kader added that the BNP is a recognized terrorist and communal evil forces and if the party comes into power again, the whole country will face a most terrible situation as it experienced in the year 2001. Chief Election Commissioner K.M. Nurul Huda has called upon the executive magistrates to work neutrally for holding the 11th national parliamentary election in a free and fair atmosphere. The CEC made this call while briefing to the executive magistrates on the electoral code of conduct held at Nirvachun Bhavon in Dhaka today. Presided over by Election Commission Secretary Hilaluddin Ahmed, among others, Election Commissioners Mahbub Talukdar, Mohammad Rafiqul Islam, Begum Kovita Khanum, and Brigadier General retired Shadat Hussein Chaudhry were present on the occasion. Executive magistrates from 21 districts of Chattogram, Silet, and Borishal divisions attended the briefing. CCKM Nurul Huda directed the executive magistrates to work with utmost sincerity, dedication, and intellectually for holding a participatory election smoothly. The CC said, Adequate security measures should be taken for the safety of the field level officials concerned, including the presiding officers. Moreover, the CEC urged the executive magistrates to treat all the political parties and candidates in equal eyes. The visiting EU Parliamentary Board delegation expressed hope that the forthcoming election will be held fairly in a peaceful atmosphere and hence EU will not send any observer. This was stated by the EU delegation at a news conference at a hotel in the capital today. The European Union Parliamentary Board delegation came to Dhaka to see for itself the socio-economic development of Bangladesh and arranged the press conference on the second day of their visit today. At the press conference they said, EU is happy with the development Bangladesh has made in the socio-economic fields. They expressed interest to bolster relations with Bangladesh. On the election issue they said, Bangladesh has attained capacity to hold free, fair and impartial election and so the EU will not send any observer. They maintain that any willing political party can contest the election under Bangladesh's electoral code of conduct. The EU Parliamentary Board delegation members said, Democratic norms are prevailing in Bangladesh and none should carry out negative propaganda abroad on the issue. Speaker Dr. Shirin Sharman Chaudhry adorned the badge of Commodore rank on recently promoted Sergeant at Arms Captain Mustaq Ahmed of Bangladesh Navy working at her office in Parliament Secretariat today. Deputy Speaker Mohammad Fazli Rabbi Mia, Whip Iqbal Ibrahim and other senior officials were present on the occasion. National Parliament election is knocking at the door and discussion exchange of view is going on at every corner of the country. Young generation are not away from this phenomena. The youth, the dreamer of a prosperous and bright Bangladesh, what are they thinking about their beloved motherlands becoming general election? One, anti-liberation force who did not want the freedom of Bangladesh does not have any acceptance to the people they must not come to power. Two, women are now more safe at home, on roads and in any other place than ever before. Women-friendly environment has been established. Now we want a government who will ensure the due dignity of women's folk and will bring technological advancement. Three, 
any party or person having linked with communalism and have negative attitude to the ethnic minorities should not be given chance to be elected. We want people's representatives who will ensure safe and friendly coexistence of all faith and creeds. Now, international news. European Union leaders have approved an agreement on the UK's withdrawal and future relations. After 20 months of negotiations, the 27 leaders gave the deal their blessing after less than an hour's discussion. They said the deal which needs to be approved by the UK Parliament paved the way for an orderly withdrawal. The UK is scheduled to leave the EU on 29th March 2019. European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker said Anyone in Britain who thought the bloc might offer improved terms if MPs rejected the deal would be disappointed. The UK Parliament is expected to vote on the deal in early December, but its approval is far from guaranteed. Many MPs are set to vote against. M Mrs May has appealed to the public to get behind the agreement, saying that although it involved compromises, it was a good deal that unlocks a bright future for the UK. French President Emmanuel Macron has lashed out at demonstrators who clashed with police in Paris during the latest protests sparked by rising fuel prices. Shame on those who attacked officers, he tweeted, there is no place for violence in the French Republic. There was chaos on the Champs Elysees on Saturday as police used tear gas and water cannon to disperse protesters. The demonstrations have been built by the Yellow Vest Movement as Act 2 in a campaign that began a week ago. Named after their distinctive high visibility attire, the protests initially focused on a rise in a fuel duty on diesel. They later grew to reflect anger at rising living costs, particularly in rural areas and other grievances against President Macron's policies. Protesters in Tunisia are pressuring the government to cancel a planned visit by the Saudi Crown Prince because of his suspected involvement in the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Activists and demonstrators are pointing to Tunisia's role in the 2011 Arab Spring Revolutions and the juxtaposition of Mohammed bin Salman's suspected role in the murder of the journalist, as well as the arrest of dozens of Saudi civil and political activists. But the cash-trapped Tunisian government is warning the protests could stop much needed financial aid from the kingdom. Now news on sports. India made a one-all draw with Australia in the three-match T20 series while they beat the Aussies by six wickets in the last match in Sydney today. Earlier Australia won the toss and batted first. They scored 164 runs for six in their stipulated 20 overs. The RC short scored 33 runs for the host. In reply, India scored 168 runs for four wickets with two balls remaining, chasing the victory target of 165 runs. Skipper Briot Kohli was unbeaten on 61 runs, while Shikhar Jawan scored 41 runs for India. Meanwhile, New Zealand is trailing by 394 runs at stumps of day two in Dubai test against Pakistan. The Kiwis scored 24 runs without any loss in the first innings at the end of the day. Jeet Raval and Tom Lepin were on the crease with 17 and 5 runs, respectively. Earlier, Pakistan started their second day spotting with an overnight score of 207 for 4 in their first innings. They declared their first innings on 418 runs for 5. Harish Shahel scored 147 runs, while Babur Azum was unbeaten on 127 runs and Azhar Ali scored 81 runs. 
New Zealand is leading by 1-0 in their three-match test series. Sri Lanka scored 53 runs for four, chasing the victory target of 327 runs against England at stumps of day three in Colombo test today. The Lankans need 274 runs more to win the test in the second innings. Gushal Mendes and Sandikan were on the crease with 15 and one run respectively. Earlier, England started the third day's batting of second innings with the overnight score of three runs without any loss. The English were all out on 230 runs in the second innings. Sri Lanka were all out on 240 runs in the first innings in the reply of England's 336 runs. England already confirmed the three-match test series by 2-0. To end the bulletin headlines once again. Bangladesh will reach a desired development goal with assistance of cooperatives, says Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Letters being sent to Awami League party nominated candidates. Formal announcement of alliance candidates tomorrow. Local front leaders surrendered to absconding convict Tariq Rahman and communal forces commence Obadul Qadir. Chief Election Commissioner asks executive magistrates to play appropriate role toward healthy, fair and impartial elections. Bangladesh on the right path of democracy and forthcoming election to be free, fair and peaceful, says visiting EU parliamentary board delegation. EU agrees the Brexit deal as European leaders urge British citizens to support Theresa May on agreement. And away in Sydney, India draw T20 series with Australia. And that's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for staying with us and we invite you to watch our 11.30 Bangla news. Until then, Khoda Hafiz. Khoda Hafiz.